Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, what I'm going to be showing today is uh, a paralysis unit that we have been developing all this year. And I want to show you why we think these modular systems are a system to implement in the future, no, implement here in the US or around the world. Okay. Um, this is, you know, starting from the end, let me see. This is uh, at the end of, the, of this um, conference, I want you to, to take, this is the message I want you to take. We need more of this kind of system modular so we can move it around. We can produce biochar in different places and save cost, operational cost, you know, in transportation and logistics and capital cost in the infrastructure. But these are the systems that we build. You see a truck coming in. This is a walking floor trailer and we automate those. Goes to us, it goes to a bin, and then it enters into our reactor. And this is our, this is a, a again a screenshot of how our our models work generally, and depends in each of the feedstock that we're using. But basically, it comes in, it grinds, it dries, and then it paralyzes in the paralyzer. Then we have uh, different ways of quenching. This is one of them. We quench them, and then it go into bags, for example. These are modular systems. And obviously, depending on the feedstock that you're using, what are the equipments that you will need? But this is pretty much the, you know, the, 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 the basic model. And obviously, there are tons of things that we can add. We add um, heat exchangers, or we add milling system for the char, or you know, sprayers for adding uh, microbes or, or nutrients or such to the, to, to the biochar. But this is a simple system. Okay, the dryer uses their own heat from the reactor. So we make it a lot um, you know, more inexpensive and simpler to use, less operational cost. What else? And, and the, obviously the pyrolysis uses its own gases that we combust some of those to provide the heat. But that's how we do it. And what I'm gonna be, I mean, very simple, my presentation, I'm gonna be talking about these four words, RD, biomass 100 miles, and in some cases like this one, which is 50% moisture, imagine how expensive that gets. Or when you're saying, yep, uh, we need to paralyze this biomass, but this biomass is wet, it's uh, large, um, it's kind of difficult to, to move around or, and, or the handling systems that we need. Well, all those things add to the front end and then makes things uh, a lot more complicated, a lot, a lot more expensive, right? And, and again, I'm not talking about the biochar quality and the systems itself, but the complexity that the biochar industry has to, uh, has to overcome in order to make successful businesses. So this is a picture of the Bioeconomy Institute, um, excellent, beautiful place to do research. We did uh, great research here. And this is just an example, no? Uh, and again, these numbers, these are technoeconomic analysis that we do. Every client is different because they use different inputs. And, and here I just uh, put in some very big numbers for you to um, for you to take home. Is if you're using facilities that they're you know a couple of hundred thousands of dollars, okay, you need to produce a lot of biochar in order to dilute that. And to produce a lot of biochar, that means a lot of transportation, a lot of biomass, and a lot of things. For this model, you know. In this model only, if you're saying we're going to be using this kind of infrastructure for this client, would it would translate in $150 per ton of the biochar because of the complexity of a facility and the expenses involved? Okay, when you're talking about transportation, um, look at this. If you transport 100 miles, you know, you say, well, yeah, it's a, a couple of dollars per mile, three, four dollars a mile. Careful, it has to be a round trip. Careful, you might be transporting 50% of moisture. And uh, you know you need a lot of equipment to load it and to unload it. At the end of the day, in this project, every ton would cost between fifty and two hundred dollars a ton of the bio, um, fifty of two hundred dollars per ton of biochar. It's a lot of money. We're talking about eight hundred dollars a ton of biochar, and you're putting only in the feedstock, transportation, or in the capital cost associated with the with the infrastructure a lot of money, a lot more money. So the, your margins are very small. We need to see margins of 30 or 50% in order to make businesses more economical. And careful, you know, I talk to uh, my clients and say, well, we're thinking, for example, on a dryer. If we buy this dryer, we make it run with $50 per ton of biomass. Great. Keep in mind that when you paralyze it, you're pretty much paralyzing three or four tons and you're producing one. So that $50 a ton that you're saying 
at the end of the day, it could be $150 or $200 in cost in the final biochar. So it is very significant. That's why we need to think, um, you know, in a broader space, in, in a broader picture, there's so many items that we need to uh, understand for the systems. Pyrolysis, why we why pyrolysis? There's so many ways to make biochar. And careful people saying good or bad biochars. I would just say biochars are there for different applications. But as you guys know, you can do torrefaction, carbonization, slow, fast pyrolysis, hours is in between, is a medium, gasification, hydrothermal liquefaction. There are lots of processes. And these are the biochars that you can be processing. They're completely different. So you need to understand your system and what you want to do. And then we start talking about, um, well, some of the, of the things on the biochar that we need to be very careful, like the previous talkers were, were saying is, well, what do we promise? Careful when you promise all that and you're producing this, you know, they're very different. So we have to know what we're doing and what they're good, uh, those materials for. Other things that I, I talk to my colleagues all the time is, um, careful with, you know, calling charcoal or carbonization. This is the legacy of carbonization, which we cannot, I mean, it's great in some parts of the world as a first step to move it forward to other system more advanced, but the, the smokes um, and the, well, the, all the pros of emissions or, or consistency of the product or, or all, the, all the issues that we have with operation, well, those are things that we need to overcome. So don't call it charcoal because charcoal has a bad reputation and we need to move ahead with system more advanced, like what we are proposing, something more automated that with one person or less than that, you can be operating and producing tons. That's the idea. And careful with the quality or the quality or the properties of your biochar. And like, uh, well, Tom was saying is we need to focus on this uh, design biochars. We need to make a carbon that we know what it is and we know what it's good for. Oh, I just realized I forgot my camera. All right. I don't know if it works, but anyway, um, so what is our point is we help the clients from the machines to define the product to make a good biochar product for their systems, okay? And we, there's a lot of technical parameters. It's not just making charcoal, you just need biochar. And what I was referring in the past, what is good and bad biochar? Well, that's another, that's another topic of discussions, but there, this biochar is good for this application. And you always need to consider everything like in agronomy, you need to consider the soil, the plants, the environment, and what you want to do with that. So, I mean, it's a, it can get a lot more complicated. So we talk a little bit about, about RD, why modular system we're proposing those, why the pyrolysis, because we need carbons that we know what we're producing. It's not just burning something and making charcoal and then calling that biochar and using this broadly. It's not a bad, it could not, it could be a good biochar, but you need to know what you're doing and how you're using it. That's the whole point. And now um, I'm going to be talking about systems. A little bit I've been, I've been talking in the past is why we need to approach it as systems. We don't sell paralyzers. We sell systems to make biochar products. Excellent. So again, um, like you see in any facility, the amount of equipment that you need is very significant. And then you start buying all those comp components and only in the integration and automation, you spend so much money. And what we're trying to do is make it simple for the client. You tell me what you want, we put it and we manufacture it and we assemble for this situation and we make it work for you. So we build anything. We build all sorts of augers, conveyors, milling systems. Some of these are patented already, most of them are. Um, we make reactors. This is the reactor. This is a reactor that the material comes. They're simple augers. You know that we can troubleshoot, we can fix. The client can go and, 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 and get the materials mostly local, most of them. So um, they're simple. They're simple to automate, simple to operate, simple to maintain. Those are the keys. We make afterburners for those. In, and again, for more specific situations, not all of them will require it. Um, and then we do cooling systems and we do bagging systems and mills. We do mills. Again, we're making biochar products. So when you're talking about, well, we're going to mix this in animal feed or we're going to mix this in, in, a, in a compost or in a, in a filler for plastics or whatever filtration, you know, we do other equipment just to provide turnkey solutions to the clients. These are examples of, you know, 
drying and equipment for labs and, and entrepreneur equipment that we can develop biochar products, okay? So um, again, what we're trying to do, modular systems, modular, simple, automated, that they're self-sustaining um, self energy. Actually, we export a lot of energy for other processes if we need. There's plenty of energy in the biomass. Careful when using very wet materials, but there's plenty of energy. And they're simple. This is a, a container. We move it with a truck. In eight hours, we take all these components out. We put it inside. We move them around. And then in eight hours, we bring it down and we assemble it back again. And this is a simple automated system. We automate the walking floor and we automate every component inside. And these are some examples of machines in our development of the, of the company and, uh, and the concept of how things have been evolving. But basically, the most successful um, components from our system, I think, has been the modularity and the simplicity. So you can make biochar and you can make it not so expensive, not so complicated in with many, many feedstocks, many, many feedstocks. So again, here is just a quick snapshot. All right. So this is, um, um, well, some of the directors of Artie. And uh, yeah, we make biochar, we make um, assemble biochar, manufacture biochar systems. And we do a lot of consultation in engineering because every biochar system is, um, is a challenge, all right? And for you guys, uh, we are selling biochar and we're having all sorts of, um, well, promotions. And now that it's Christmas, consider buying some biochar for the naughty kids. That was a kind of a quick um, advertising for, from our marketing team. <laughs> 